All right. Let's go to what's the primary wiring system today in configuration, which is a Y-connected transformers. Y-connected transformers have one lead from each of the windings connected to a common point. The lead from each winding is connected to the line conductors. So we're not worried about the delta primary. It's not an issue. Let's talk about the delta Y-connected. Let's focus on the Y connection here. The voltage of this winding here is going to be 120, and then 120 and 120. And Steve, what you taught us earlier, that means that the number of windings on the primary on this primary compared to the windings on the secondary is there's four times more windings on the primary than there is in the secondary. So this, this transformer ratio, turns ratio, is four to one. Not that it's a big deal, but just so you understand how that numbers work out. Now, you bring, here's a transformer, three different physical transformers. You connect them all together here at this one spot. Then you run one wire over on the load, second wire over, third wire over, and then the center point. And people say, well, you derive a neutral or a new neutral. You're not deriving anything. That just happens to be a point you're connecting to, and that's 120. Now, let's talk about a Y configuration. What is the advantages of a Y system? Well, the advantage to a Y system is that if you have a lot of 120 volt loads, you can distribute those loads over three different windings. Where if you go back to the delta, delta configuration, Look what the problem is here. You only have one transformer that you can connect 120 volt loads on here, which means you can't have this as a pad mount of transformer. You'd have to have three physical different size transformers. You'd have two smaller transformers and then one larger transformer because of all the 120 volt loads being restricted onto that one winding. But the advantage to the delta is higher voltage. Not really the best system you want to have. You have a bunch of 120 volt loads, but when you go into a Y system, well, yeah, you know, the voltage is a little lower, which means what? If you were having a bunch of line-to-line -line loads, higher current. But if you have a whole bunch of lighting loads, you can distribute the loads over, and now you can get what? A built-in transformer that's already constructed as a pad-mounted transformer. It's a lot more convenient than screwing around with a bunch of three separate different transformers. So advantages of a Y system is you get line-to-neutral loads, and you can distribute those loads and you still get line-to-line -line loads, voltage a little lower. Here's another way of looking at it. Oh, I was looking at the primary, I was like, wait a minute, that looks like delta. Yeah, that is, that is a delta configuration. So I'm not worried about that, we're talking about the Y. We probably need to describe this as uh, delta. Yeah, but I'd rather have this word delta here and then Y configuration here so I can see that a little quicker. Okay, so now let's see what we got here. We get this winding is connected XO connects to XO, connects to XO, and then this is X1, X2, X3. Line to line voltage is 208, and line to neutral voltage is 120. Let me tell you a story about this type of graphic here. <coughs> I did a seminar for Grand Coulee Dam. I did a few of those um, up at uh, Spokane, I think, north of Spokane, Washington, Grand Coulee. Uh, kind of interesting area up there. And I get up there, and I'm learning all about it. I went into the penstock. The penstock is where the water comes down and it goes all the way down and it goes and it comes around and it spins around and it goes to a turbine. Now it's only like about a six foot diameter where it actually gets to the turbine. So I'm now physically in the penstock and it's very cold because you're in the bottom of the dam. The temperature is in the bottom of the water is probably in the low 40s and so the concrete over the generations of time has gotten very cold so I'm freezing in the penstock and I'm thinking to myself man I hope somebody doesn't press that button you know mm -hmm. what I mean because I'm gonna be chum coming out the other end there so I'm in there and I'm seeing how this water comes in and looking at the turbine I'm like man that is so cool it's a little tiny thing I can't believe that and it's turning okay Eric is it turning magnets or is it turning the winding I think it's I can't remember what it's turning. Anybody know? You, there are no permanent magnets on a generator like that. There, it's a well, okay, synchronous the machine. But so is it turning? Is it? What, it's what? Effectively, it's turning a magnet because it's a synchronous machine. Okay. So it's, it's turning the magnetic field. Okay. Right. And then you have the conductors on the outside. So you have the magnetic field that's being moving through the conductors, which is inducing voltage. And it produces 13,008 volts. Okay. 13, eight, well. Maybe it's 14.4 now, whatever it is. But at that time, it was 13.8. I mean, that was Grand Coulee Dam, right? So now, I go outside the dam, and there's this huge green thing. And I run up to it, and I don't know what any of this stuff is working. I mean, I'm here in a power plant. I mean, this is one of the, you know, this is a famous power plant, Grand Coulee Dam. 
And I walk around, I look at that, and I see a sign that says Phase A. a. <laughs> and I'm stunned. Because I'm used to seeing a transformer, right? I mean, it's a transformer. And I'm thinking, it is a transformer, but this is Phase A. And I look up, and I realize, well, there's three of them. And I look up, and guess what? There's two stabs coming out of the line side. And I'm looking at them. So now I'm looking at the two stabs of each of those, and I see there's a bar from one bus on each phase that connects to each one. And if you have one bar on each one connected together, then there was three wires, one from each transformer going up. I looked at the guy. I'm like, it's a y. Ah, you got a Y secondary? He goes, yep. And I'm like, wow, no matter how big it is, we still have the fundamentals. Right. It was a Y secondary, 500,000 volts. And each of those transformers were 500,000 VA. 500 MVA. 500, I'm sorry, 500 MVA, giving you 500,000 volts phase to phase. Just simple, basic transformer. It was a delta coming out at 13.8 going up to 500,000, then they transmit 500,000, do some magnetic coupling somewhere else at, what, 138,000. Then they do some more magnetic coupling down to maybe 69,000. Magnetic coupling maybe somewhere like around 34,000. Magnetic coupling somewhere around 14,000. Magnetic coupling somewhere around 277, 480. Some more magnetic coupling down to a 120, 208. So the electrons from the power plant actually never even left the power plant. They just went up to the primary, mm -hmm. and they went, I mean, it went for the primary winding of the primary, and it went right back down the line. So it's the magnetic coupling that we're getting done here. So look back at this graphic here. Oh, Eric, you going to say something? Yeah, you brought up a, a brilliant principle about this, this whole system, and that is if you look at this transformer on the graphic, you'll see that there's air between the primary and the secondary, effectively. It's totally, totally isolated. So if there's a fault on the 500,000-volt system, it doesn't go through the air to the 138 uh, KV system. So it's, it, it's, there's also a big safety factor here, safety issue. Separate coupling. By the way, if you, if, when, you, when you have this magnetic coupling, that's called a separately derived system. Get a coil of 12 gauge wire and put another coil of 12 gauge wire on top of that. Put a light bulb on the second coil. Get a clear light bulb, okay? And then take the first coil of 12 gauge wire, Connect it to a cord set or an extension cord, whatever you want to say, a power supply cord, and plug it in a receptacle, but you only have like about 45 seconds. When you plug it in, it'll draw about 40 amperes, and then while it's drawing 40 amperes on this primary that you plugged in, the coil of wire on top is going to be carrying very, very little current, but the light bulb would light up. Put an iron bar between the primary and secondary. We talk about this in our theory course and how, the, how transfers work out. So that is called a separately derived system. All right, let's get back here. So here's your primary, which is a delta primary because it's all connected in series. Here's your secondary. They're all connected to one point. That's a Y secondary. Another way to look at it, here is, this is all connected in series. This is a delta. We'll identify this as a delta configuration. And then we'll identify this as they're all coming to the one point here. And then line one, line two, and line three, this is going to be a Y configuration. Primary secondary line voltage on a Y system. That's the voltage measured on the primary side is the primary voltage, and the voltage measured on the secondary side is pretty straightforward, is going to be the secondary voltage. We talked about the primary line voltage is 480 because we're having a connected delta. Now, I don't know this to be the case, and I don't want to speculate too much in here, guys. My experience is generally it's delta, 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 Y. There's no reason why it can't be Y, 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 delta, okay? But there are some voltage considerations. So I'm not going to get into Y deltas uh, unless we get maybe at the end of the DVD, we can kind of review that and discuss that. So we're talking delta, 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 Y for right now. So here's my delta primary. Here's my Y secondary. What's my voltage as well? From line to line, take a voltmeter, it's 208. And from line, any one line, the neutral is going to be 120. Stephen. Uh, just a point to notice that if it is a Y connected system, your line to neutral times square root of 3 will give you your line to line. Hold on one second. So hold 120. On, hold, hold on a second. Slow me down. Let me slow you down. Sorry. Line to neutral voltage. Okay. 120. Yeah. Times 1.732 gives you 208. Okay. 277 now, times 1.732 gives you 480. 
Okay. So you know those are Y-connected systems when you have that square root of you're, 3. Okay, so if you're saying the voltage between line and neutral and line to line, if line to line is 1.73 times more than the 120, then you know, it's, it's going to be a Y configuration. And not that we even care, right? But, but if somebody asks you a question, hey, you got a, you got a 12208, what kind of transform winding it is? Well, it has to be a Y. If it's 12240, it's a delta, or it, it would right. be line to line. I'm not even afraid to go here, but I'm going to give it a shot here. <laughs> Eric. Okay, this real quick. <laughs> what you said earlier about the, the rulers, the paper, and the drawing also holds true <clears> here. <throat> if you lay out that Y with 12 inches, 12 inches, and 12 inches. Hold on, hold on. You're saying if I had show this, and I should show this, is 120 volts here. And if I show this as 120 volts here, and if we say the 120 volts were just simply 12 inches, a measurement, 12 say. inches and 12 inches, that this distance, is this a hypotenuse? No, no because but I still have that it's theorem. not a right triangle. We still got the theorem. Yeah, and so if you, yeah, if you were actually to draw a dotted line from the neutral point up, you'd have two right triangles. Now, would that be A squared? plus B squared? No, no, not in this particular case. But but just if we just go back and say that A is 12 inches and B is 12 inches, this is then point, point to point is 20.8 inches. Okay, so it, it, all works it, just, out. it just, that's how it's going to work electrically as it works mathematically. It's all math. It's right. all math, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Again, you know, I realize that some of the stuff we're talking about is, it isn't necessary. But I, I believe it's a good thing to have the basis and understand theory and fundamentals because that gives you the tools, I think, that just to help you understand and communicate with people. All right, I'm done with delta delta. I'm done with delta y. We explain why a delta delta gets used. Not so much today. Why delta y gets used is most common because you can, you can configure those in, in compartments already pre-built and configured.